Okay, folks, um, I know episode 8 is coming out tonight for Game of Thrones, uh, season 6, but I'm just going to try to break down a, a review for episode 7. Uh, given that all these episodes, you know, in season 6, I'm seeing at least the latest ones, they're uh, really cramming a you know bunch of stuff into them. I'm going to split this up into multiple parts, try to cover it by region, but some of these regions, there was, you know, like the Riverlands, there's a lot going on there, there are multiple storylines. So, you know, start covering with, the, you know, the Hound Returns now. I I definitely liked it, and I definitely saw, like, how he, uh, you know, how, how, you know, with his return, you know, that was, like, the first scene, you know, bringing him back right away, um, at least, if, you know, in this, in this episode. Uh, I, I liked how they showed his, like, character development. He's not, he's not his brother, you know. He, he actually has, like, a sense of remorse to some extent, and a certain perspective on things, and, uh, I mean, it's it's really sad that that community was murdered. They were just kind of living on their own, doing their own thing, you know, kind of going quote unquote off the grid. And uh, you know, it's just it's this constant like reminder in this world that, you know, as much as you might not want to fight, you have to know how to fight and when to fight. So you have to, you have to know how to be bad when it's necessary. You know, a sort of Machiavellian sense. You can't always be good. You should try to be good as much as you can, but if, if it comes down to it, you gotta know how to take out the steel, you know, the sword and fight. And I appreciate the, you know, Brother Ray, I believe it was, he's the Septon. I mean, he can, he's had this sort of, like, influence on, even in his death, like, on, on the Hound, essentially, like, kind of planting that seed of redemption, if you will. You know, given that the Hound has, you know, being a member of, great, uh, of House Cle Clegane and serving in the King's Guard, and just even his travels across, you know, the Riverlands and the Vale, I mean, he's murdered lots and lots of people, but I mean, he's at this point where he's starting to be redeemed. And, you know, even though he takes an axe and walks off to go after the, apparently what, you know, we're led to believe are the Brotherhood. You know, now it's like if he, if he, if and when he does kill people, it's going to be for revenge. It's not going to be, oh, I'm just going to steal your silver, or I'm doing this because some prince told me to, or I just like it. It's, this is revenge. You killed innocent people. I'm avenging them, you know? So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting and really, I think, exciting to see that influence on him, that sort of change that, you know, it's not, he's not just killing it for the sake of killing or killing because some highborn is telling him to, and it's just his job. It's like he's doing it for, for a greater cause, for the cause of the innocent, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's definitely changed in his outlook, um, but let's see, ah, one thing I was going to talk about, um, uh, was definitely the brother without banners, now, I am of the opinion that these people who win kill this community are not actually members of the brotherhood, see, I I kind of think that at this point, you know, we've had, what, like, this is like, maybe I think three seasons or so without the Brotherhood, uh, you know, being there as like an active player. I think that, you know, they have grown to the point where it's kind of like a brand name sort of thing, like, you know, to the point that House Frey is mentioning them, you know, it's like they're, they are more than just, you know, a few isolated criminals who are, you know, stealing or, you know, burning building a ton or whatever and, and, you know, causing a little pain in the neck for the, you know, other people living in that region. They're big players now, they're a faction, you know, and so I'm thinking that in some of these cases there are just regular old criminals who they claim to be members of the Brotherhood just so they can use that to ride through the riverless with impunity and rob people at will. So I'm not really, I mean, that's kind of a bit complicated, I think, you know, because you're going to have this whole conflict between the true brotherhood and the false brotherhood, and who's really, you know, who really represents them and, uh, and their mission, which is to stand up for the lowborn against the highborn and, and and seek justice, you know, and not just wait for it, but actually enact it, you know, kind of like the, someone like vigilante is in, in a sense. Um, but, you know, I'm obviously expecting a simplified version of that where it's just, oh, these are just religious fanatics, because that is a theme in Game of Thrones, religious fanaticism, um, the ever-present, you know, nature of violence, and, uh, definitely want to see the Brotherhood, uh, or, or the, the, see those criminals, you know, mowed down by the Hound, um, 
you know, see him uh, start his redemption. So I'm going to stop here because I think I'm coming up on my max uh, recording capability on here. Hopefully I've covered everything that needs to be covered uh, as far as the hound is concerned. Uh, thanks for watching my video and uh, have a nice day.